What's up, divas and divos? Y'all already know what time it is. Y'all already know who it is. We're just going to get into this Real Talk Wednesday. Um, I decided to do my makeup again with you guys today because um, I'm going to attempt to try to do a video today. Besides this one, I'm not really sure how that's going to work out. So... I just figured, you know what, while I'm sitting here doing this real talk, I'm going to just do my same every day, all the time, and go to makeup look, okay? I'm pretty sure that you guys are very aware of just from watching my real talks, and I have done my makeup in some of them, that the kind of look that I do is basically probably the same as always. And if you have noticed that... Um, if you have looked at any of my past Real Talk videos, that um, I had to remove the sound from my intro. You know, how I had the Drake fake friends or whatever it's called. I had to actually mute that out of the video because one of my videos got taken down and I had a copyright strike by universal music so i'm pretty sure that's with drake like come on man i stole your life for like 15 seconds if that okay and they took my music down i had to go to copyright school for youtube which was like a six minute class and if i get any more copyright strikes like I think like three more, this is my very first one I've ever had, then they're going to disable my channel or suspend it. So listen, I was not even trying to go there, but thanks a lot, Drake. I don't even listen to his music. All right. I don't really find him entertaining because I guess I'm older. Um, no offense, but damn, I thought I kind of liked the song because it kind of went with the intro and the real talk and who I was as a person. So I stole his motherfucking life for like 10 seconds and OMG. You know what's so fucked up though? I see a lot of other YouTubers using other people's music. It'll be like for 25 seconds. I think you can't use it no longer than 25 seconds. And it's like, okay, I'm going to do that. I'm going to finally do that. I have never taken um, anybody's music because I just felt like, girl, I'm already get a strike and they're going to come after me. I just know. I just know. But then I read something on YouTube that was like, you can use it for like up to 25 seconds. I made sure that shit was 15 seconds, that intro music, okay? To a T. And... Drake must have got real upset when I stole his life for 10 seconds, okay? Like, seriously, like, let's be real. In case you guys are like, what is that? This is the A2O UHD primer spray. This is from Shop Miss A. You know what? Everything is only a dollar for a dollar. What I say? Make me holler. I love this stuff. Like, I do have other ones, but this one right here, babies, <gasps> mm, it works so good. So so good and i love it so when i put this on i don't have to use anything else like i don't really use like no moisturizer or nothing like that because you know my face is already greasy as fuck but i always do use this doll face clarify oh my god this is the balancing tonic you guys see me use this in every video even when i do my rare makeup videos i use that because it's just so so good like it's good for your skin i think i'm gonna turn the, my ring light on because the sun is like really fucking with me so excuse the light it's gonna be really bright for one second okay it's like the gremlins bright light bright light okay so yeah I, um i guess i have to just like have no intro music or whatever it is what it is i could care fucking less about drake and his bullshit then I'm going to go ahead and put this Kiss New York Professionals Pro Touch Mattifying Primer. I showed you guys this in like a, a video, like I think it was like two weeks ago. It's like that Becca Cosmetics, you know how it's for good oily skin. You don't need a lot of it, only in certain areas. And this shit is like bomb as fuck. I mean, like seriously, it's a way, way, way cheaper than the Becca. And I'm pretty sure everybody knows this. This is a drugstore brand. And I absolutely loves it. Like, oh God. This stuff is like a blessing in disguise. And this is my hair look for today. You know something, ladies? I try so hard to get dressed. Like, I mean, I have like a closet full of clothes 
but I just don't like to wear them. I think like, I guess because I have gotten so used to just sitting at home, not even sitting because trust and believe I don't sit here and do nothing. I am at home and I have a lot of things to do and I do run a lot of errands. Like, you know, I have a life, so I do run errands and I do have shit to do. But I got so accustomed and so comfortable in wearing elastic all the time that now if you tell me, girl, get dressed up or well, ain't nobody telling me that because I ain't got no friends. But I'm saying like if I got to go somewhere and I got to get dressed up, I will not go. Like, well, I do have a friend, Rebecca, my bestie. I will not go. I will not fucking go because, or I'll have a fit and I'll find something that's not so flattering, but it's comfortable. Listen, also... I just have to share this with you guys because I am just like so tickled pink about this mirror. All right. Now, first of all, I know there are a lot of people that always be so happy about their little shit. And I'm one of them. The cheapest little shit that you can see I find. I'd be just so amazed with it. And I'm I'm a huge fan of like, not a huge fan because I don't like everything they got. But I love going to Ikea. Me and my daughters, we love going to Ikea because you could just walk around. You could spend like the whole day in there. And they have like a cafeteria where you could buy food. It ain't the greatest of the of food. But you know what? It's time well spent. You have spent the day there. You have shopped around. You have looked at shit there are levels to that shit you have bought some cheap shit i'm not saying i will fuck with their furniture like couches and stuff and dressers uh maybe the dresses for my makeup but i'm not putting no real clothing up in that shit you know what i'm saying and i'm damn sure not buying their couches and for the price of their couches girl buy all right them shits be like this big and low to the ground and be costing like this much like some of the things are just not for me, but I do like some of their home decor, like very, you know, inexpensively priced, which is great because a bitch be on a budget. So we was there this past weekend, me, Mumsy, and Nae, we just like to go walk around and shit and just look at the different sceneries because, you know, they change shit. Now, I had seen this mirror before, but just was like, girl, you don't need that. You don't need it. You got a mirror. A mirror that I don't even use because it's not even high enough. I have to hike it up. Let me tell you, this mirror was $20 and I was like, you know what? I am not leaving this fucking store without this, like dead ass serious. This was the best makeup investment that I have ever fucking purchased for 20 damn dollars. And I say makeup because that is what I got it for. But it's real good when you can look at yourself in the mirror from here to like motherfucking right here. All right. And see everything as clear as day. I'm about to show y'all this. This mirror, I'm about to go buy me another one the next time I go to um Home, Home Depot. Go to um IKEA. This mirror is amazing. Okay, look at this. I know y'all see this shit. Do y'all see how big it is? Like, look. I want y'all to see this shit. So in case you are in need of a mirror, y'all be like, oh snap. Do you see how big the whole thing is? It's made really good, sturdy, okay? It's so clean and clear. You know how some mirrors you can buy, but the clarity is not that crisp because it's a cheap mirror? This mirror is made so well. For $20, $19.99, it is um, the, I think it's called, listen, I don't know, but on the bottom it says Tyson-S, Tyson-S, T. T is in Tom, Y-S-N-E-S, 22, the SKU number is 22439, 22439. I freaking love this mirror. I'm going to put it up so you guys can see it right there. Hopefully you guys can see it. Maybe your eyes can't. I don't really know. But this mirror is amazing, and I'm so happy with it. Like, seriously. I had to put my old mirror to rest. And then also, I'm going to show you guys this little stand that kind of resembles this mirror to me. It just looks so much like this mirror. They sent me this. This company sent this to me. I'm not really sure of the name, but I'll definitely post it below. But I'm going to post this up right now because they starting to get on my last damn nerve. Like, seriously, stop fucking hounding me for a video review. Do you really think you're going to get a dedicated video review for some bullshit? Like, it ain't no bullshit, but you asked me to pick like one cheap ass fucking thing that I could bought at the Dollar Tree. Because it might not be the same exact style, but it serves the same motherfucking purpose. So it's this mobile stand. I know y'all bitches is like, a what? Yes, it's a mobile stand. Like, okay, don't get me wrong. I like it. It comes in handy. You could either put your iPad on it 
or your phone. I'm not putting my iPad on it because it already has a dock. And on top of that, I just really don't feel like it's sturdy enough. It kind of was wobbling. There's nothing on the sides that holds it in place like the one that I have. So I'm not putting my iPad on it. But let me tell you, I will put my freaking iPod on it in case I want to watch TV. Now, granted, once I put the case on there, it's not going in the thing. You, you know what I'm saying? Like, you see, it's just sitting right there. It's sitting. So you can't really have a case. But um, I will put it on my desk with this because I think it looks fancy. And I'm like, okay, I got my iMac, my iPad, and my iPod. I'm doing it. I ain't got no iPhone anymore. But, you know, I'm kind of being fancy. I just like to make myself feel important sometimes. But normally when I'm sitting here and I'm doing my makeup in my bathroom or whatever, I take my phone because I love watching Netflix, okay? I have had the same Netflix account since the day they fucking started. And I'll put my phone. Now, normally I'll hook... I'll rig my phone up. But being that ever since I've gotten this, this has come in handy. So my phone fits very well in here. And it's just a Galaxy. And it, it, it's like the right position so I'm able to watch it, which is great. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I mean, like, it's just a phone holder, mobile holder. It's made of, like, the same type of material as the um, material. Uh, as a mirror. So it kind of resembles each other to me. And I thought, well, you know what? Let me not forget to show this off because I would dread for them. I would hate for them to have to send me another daggone email talking about when are you going to send the, when are you going to post up the review? Like you just sent me a million dollar fucking product. Okay. You ain't even paid for this video. Like it's a free motherfucking video. You get no dedication. That shit is not going to be dedicated. So thank you for the mobile holder. I mean, I got like three or four other ones in here. Thanks to Mumsy. Cause you know, she stayed with, with, with her, with my iPad propped up on shit. So I, Listen, we got enough of these mobile holders. And what's really good for an iPad or a tablet holder is you go to the Dollar Tree and you got those frame holders, those things that you can sit your plates in or your pictures. They're, they're you know, they're, they sit your pictures in. They're, I can't I can't describe them, but they they where the, the frames are at, that section. They're little wire things, and, they you know, you could put plates in them as decor. Or, you know, she set her shit right up in there. That's the cheapest-ass mobile holder I've ever fucking dealt with. So, yes. Um, and other than that, okay, so you know something? Let me tell y'all something real quick. I know a lot of bitches don't have an attention span past a two-year-old, and that's okay. A lot of people in general don't, and that's okay, too. Meaning, if you don't like something, bitch, keep fucking pushing. All right? I, listen, I hate to address shit sometimes, but sometimes I feel like I need to because some people are just so fucking rude, and they just don't get it. Okay? So, if you don't like something... You know something? It ain't even that. Because I could care less if you don't fucking like it. But please don't come on my video and say, I love your I love your wig reviews and your Dollar Tree hauls. But can you just show the product and keep it moving? There's too much talking. So, bitch, I guess what you really want me to do is be like, got this from the Dollar Tree, got this from the Dollar Tree, got this from the Dollar Tree, and keep it pushing. Fuck the conversation that I'm about to have with you and talk to you about the shit. So just be real impersonable, real impersonal, and just keep it pushing. Like, you know, I had to wake up and read that shit. And, like, here's my thing. First of all, I have my daughter Mumsy in my motherfucking videos with me for my Dollar Tree. Tree. Bitch, you ain't about to come up on my motherfucking video and run your mouth. I was like, oh, are we rude much? What I should have just said was, I'm sorry, your attention span is not past the two-year-old. Why don't you keep it pushing? Or can you pay attention long enough to keep it pushing? That is just me, okay? And so here we go on to the next topic at hand. So last week, you know, I did share with you guys how I felt about my whole Vegas trip. And it is what it is. I'm sorry that there's some people that think that I'm too dramatic or that it wasn't that bad. But here's the thing. I'm really not okay. I was put in a very uncomfortable situation. Um, I love to hang out with people when I get the opportunity, especially if you are meant for me to hang out with. But when I first meet your family, I don't really feel like I need to be breaking up any kind of family arguments and fights. That made me feel so uncomfortable. And 
you know, I didn't even share the half or the whole with you guys about the rest of it or how it was just going down in the house. You know, I got this woman here yelling at her husband who's 20 years, 25 years older than her. He's in his 70s. He's old and frail. And I'm sitting there on the couch and it's like y'all are attacking him. And then he's got his wife who's screaming, well, just give me $200,000 and I'll be out of your life just in his face. Like... It was a very uncomfortable situation and I just was sitting there like, oh my God, they're just like attacking this old man. He's like old as fuck, okay? And they're just like literally like going to bat like, and I was just trying to stay neutral in the whole thing. After a while, I just had to shut down and not say nothing because... I just wanted to leave at that point. It was very, very uncomfortable and I, I had never really... You know something? I'm all for everybody getting their coins and stuff, but... You're never forced into anything like, okay, this is my thing on it. Like if you you're just not forced into the situation, you got kids with the motherfucker, you messed with him, then you took him from his family and you married him, et cetera, et cetera. You've been with him for all of these years and now you complain it or now you want your money and, and hit the road. Like I just felt like it was a very, very uncorporate situation and it was handled really inappropriately. You know what I'm saying? Like I have been through a lot of shit in my time being married. So a lot of the shit that I had seen at that moment really was like, I could relate to it in a certain kind of way. And being that when I say I could relate to it means I could relate to it back then and I know how she feel and I know how he feel however I'm not in that situation anymore because I've changed things and knowing the things that I know now I definitely would have liked to been able to rectify the situation with my ex-husband and been able to move forward you know what I'm saying because I have already been in that situation so looking at people that are way older than me was just like, wow, you guys are really going to sit here and act childish like this. And then you're spewing out money, money, money. And I hate to see couples in relationships and all they arguing about is money. Like true indeed, we need money to go and make the world go around. We need money to survive. But when you have been with somebody for so long, you know what I'm saying? It has to get past the money situations. You have to be, be able to work together as a couple, as a family, as a unit to help one another. Like, not just be like, well, give me my $200,000 and I'll be out your face and we could be apart. Like, damn, y'all been together for like 27 years and $200,000 is just going to make you happy. Like, and you just forget about it all. Like, dang, like I can't stand shit like that. So it, it was a very, very uncomfortable situation for me. You know what I'm saying? And like some people was like, oh I was acting dramatic okay maybe so do you guys and then I'm in the car and I got um you know I'm hearing people talk in like the Holy Ghost tongue and like that was making me feel uncomfortable I, I felt like I was in a twilight zone situation you know what I'm saying I really really did and as much as I wanted to be in a friendship it was hard for me it was really really hard for me to get past to get past that not even really hard but it was just like very uncomfortable you know what I'm saying and not even the fact that I'm an introverted person and I like to keep to myself, but the whole situation made me feel very, very uncomfortable. You know what I mean? Very uncomfortable. So I'm not being dramatic. I'm just, you know, just letting you guys know it was a very uncomfortable situation. Um, and that's about all I wanted to say about that. Also, my friend Sarah, I, you know what? I have to say this because I wouldn't be the type of person that I am. You know what I'm saying? My friend Sarah, now yes, I do have more than one friend, Rebecca, who was my bestie. But my friend Sarah, we have been friends since 2008. Okay? So she lives in Michigan. But we have been friends since 2008. Now, you know you have these friends that you have made through social media you never met personally, but y'all y'all be on the phone enough. Like my friend Shay, who's here on YouTube, um, Sarah, and then my other friend Andrea. Me and my friend Andrea, we actually went into business each with each other like a couple years ago. Well, she had a business, but and you know I just made wigs for her. But anyway, so my friend Sarah, she calls me, and we've been friends since my very first channel, two thousand and eight, two thousand and nine. You know what I'm saying? And she's my age. And there's a lot of things that she has told me in my time on YouTube that I was like, damn, I should just listen to this bitch. You know what I'm saying? For real. And then my friend Christy Love, who also has been my friend since 2008, who lives in Cali. And we always, you know what I love about Christy is 
she swear mumsy's hers and we'll talk shit to each other all the time but it's out of love you know what i'm saying so it's no disrespect or anything like that and though she lives the next state over and i've been here for four years it's kind of fucked up that she ain't brought her fucking ass here or i haven't brought my ass there but you know what i'm saying me and her have like the same type of situation and she understands me as a person so that's what i really like about her like if i don't speak to her for a while i think she kind of understands and she knows you know what i'm saying without me having to tell her so i respect that but anyway so my friend sarah calls me yesterday as I was after I was driving to the Dollar Tree, because y'all bitches know I love the Dollar Tree. And she was like, girl. I was like, what's up, Sarah? Why am I on my social media and you are not part of with these? Um, why, why are you not in L.A. with everybody else? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She was like, yeah, I got to go on my social media and I see this bitch and that bitch in L.A. Um, at some type of YouTube thing or whatever and why are you not there and i was like well first of all i didn't know anything about it i said second of all you already know that i don't like doing shit like that and i had to tell her i said listen i have been invited to many of those things before the reason why i don't go is because i don't have a tolerance for bullshit and not only that but i cannot be fake you know what i'm saying when I say I cannot be fake, meaning I cannot stand around and be hobshnobbing and schmoozing with a bunch of fake ass bitches that I really don't give a fucking care for. It'll be like a goddamn basketball wise motherfucking love and hip hop reunion up in that bitch. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like uh, the type of person I am, I just listen. I try to be real with you at all times and trust and believe I am not about to sit around and smile up in your face. Now, trust and believe I have sat around and smiled up in bitches faces and talk shit about bitches behind their back many a times okay because i have and i will just be real about the shit and let y'all know that shit but in my day and age i just don't have the tolerance for that shit anymore like i'm not really into shit like that and on top of that i just don't have the tolerance to be sitting around or standing the fuck around and being fake with people and then going back home and talking about them. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't do that. And like I told her, I said, the way that my face, I said, I be standing there and I'm always being told, like, fix your face, fix your face. Why are you looking at somebody like that? Like, the way I look at people is not done purposely. Like, I don't look at you purposely like that. My face, that's my face by default. Okay? By motherfucking default. If I look at you some type of way, it's by default. I have not done that on purpose i'm not trying to give you like a dirty stank face it's just by default those are my motherfucking reactions everybody got a reflex and a motherfucking reaction to shit and i like i told her i said the best thing for me to do is to stay my black ass at home i said because i refuse to be somewhere and be feeling like real uncomfortable because i got people smiling up in my face knowing damn well bitch you don't like me and knowing damn well bitch i don't like you but for fucking media social media circumstances i'm gonna have to stand here and be motherfucking fake that's the hardest fucking role to play in the world is to be fake i don't know about y'all bitches but it's a real hard role and after a while it's like you know what a bitch gotta breathe i gotta come up for some motherfucking air sometimes like i cannot stand here and keep smiling like that hurts my motherfucking face and my heart like listen bitch i'ma just stand over here and they'll probably be like, why are you looking at me like that? Bitch, I'm not looking at you no type of way, okay? Those are my reactions and my face and my expression by default. So like I told her, the best thing for me to do, girl, is stay my ass right over here in Arizona. I could care less about all of that bullshit that goes on. I could care motherfucking less. What I do is right here, and I like to do that. I don't need to be out hobshnobbing. Now, don't get me wrong. I would like to, but... I would like to without all the bullshit. And I'm pretty sure that behind all of that shit comes some motherfucking bullshit. Okay? So, a bitch will stay right motherfucking here. Because I'm pretty sure that there'll be some motherfucking people there 
that I know is too fake or is acting fake towards me. And then I'm going to have to act fake towards them. And then, damn, I'm going to be a fake ass bitch. It's already bad enough. I got a fake eyelashes on. I got a fake hair on. I got a fake nails on. I got a fake stomach on. We meaning a bitch got a girdle on or a waist trainer. So I'm being fake as a motherfucker. I cannot be too fake in one motherfucking day. Shit. Shh. Half of them bitches be so fake, they fake. Like I told her, I said, them bitches is fake as my motherfucking earrings that I got in my ears. Them fake ass gold earrings I got on, them bitches is just as fake as those, all right? And these shits will never fucking fade or turn. But some of them bitches will turn, they fucking back and heart on you in a heartbeat. So my motherfucking earrings will last longer than them fucking friendships. So I'm just saying. So, yeah, there goes your answer to that, Sarah. And, like, for a lot of people that be like, oh, why don't you have a meet and greet? Same motherfucking thing, too. All right? Same motherfucking thing, too. It's hard for me to be fucking fake. And I don't like for people to be up in my face being fake as well. I'm just saying. I'm just fucking saying. Okay? So, you guys know, um, what was that? There was something that I wanted to say to y'all, but I can't even remember. <gasps> Oh, yes. Okay, so, this young lady, she sent me, where is she from? I think this is, like, from the UK or something like that. Because there's a queen on that shit. So, Britain, I think so. Either way, she asked me what I review her eyelashes. And they're strip lashes. They're so daggone pretty. Beautiful packaging. Really nice. You guys know I love lashes. Um, It's called elbeauty.com. Okay? So, um, I have included styles the Coco, Naomi, Vegas, and Beverly, which was launched today. If there are any other styles you would like to try, please do not hesitate to reach out to me. So, she, these are 3D mink eyelashes. I love lashes. And I have been doing mine a little bit different lately. Um, you know, I only do individuals. So, I put them underneath here. But on the top, I cut them up. Like the strips, I'll cut up and I'll put them on the top. It's, it's a long story, but they last like two weeks. But look at her packaging. Like, this is so different. And I'm going to zoom in real quick. You guys can see that, right? Okay. So, she has, like, really pretty lashes. I'm going to take them out the case. Ooh, cool. So, super easy. I was about to try to tear this case up. All you got to do is pull it out like that. Fancy. So I'm not really sure which ones these are because there's no name on. Oh. Well, yeah, there's no name on the box. So, oh, these are the Cocos. Like my dog, his name is Coco. Not saying what her lashes are, but these are so freaking pretty and full. Oh my God. Let me get in. Let me get in on that for you guys. Do you guys see that? So pretty. I should just like zoom in. I'm going to zoom in. Aren't those gorgeous? Those are the Cocos, which are absolutely full and very, very dramatic, okay? And like I was saying, the casing is absolutely nice. All you do is slide it back into this opening right here. That is so different, all right? Loving it. And then it also has an outer case if you're into keeping the cardboard, okay? And these are the Cocos. Please excuse the blurriness, okay, because I'm trying to show you guys stuff. These are the Vegas. These, I think, are my faves. Yes. I, listen, I will glue these strips down. And on the back, there's like this little thing where you put your finger at, you can push it out. Now, I love the way these flutter or separate. They're so full, but I like the way that they're, like, separated and such. That looks just so very glamorous to me. I would wear these, like, on an everyday basis, and I definitely, definitely would like these. I think I might just have to put on, but like I said, I like to wear individuals. So with me, the way I apply my lashes are totally crazy. You guys are probably like, girl, it's not a lot on your eyes, but it really, really isn't, and I don't have to wake up every day and do them which is really, really great. So, yeah, I like these a lot. These are the Vegas's, and these are my faves. Then we have the Naomi's. And these kind of remind me of the Coco's, but not as full. You know what I'm saying? Like, so they, they kind of remind me of the Coco's. 
but they're not as full, which is, is is great because some people don't like them too dramatic. I think I would be able to wear something like this daily. These are more like everyday ones for me because I like them very full and voluptuous, but I don't like them too dramatic. Like I don't like fans, actual fans on my lashes. Like some girls like them really, really big. And you know, to each his own, that's your preference. But these are really pretty. They're very full, but not too full. You know what I'm saying? These are Beverly's. These are the Beverly's, okay? The Beverly's, like Beverly Hills. And these kind of remind me, let's see. Huh. They're a little bit like the Naomi's, but they're a little bit more kind of like angled, a little bit more slanted more. So these are the Beverly's, okay? And they they have more or less like I'm gonna show you how they would look on your actual eye. They get a little bit smaller right here, which I like. I like when they get a little bit smaller because that's how I do my individuals. I go large, 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 and a couple of mediums and a couple of smalls because I want them to look really natural. But I don't like them too big on the inner tear duct, so inner eye. So these are perfect for like a definite everyday wear, as well as the Beverly's too. They go in a little bit, but they're a little bit more fuller. She has some really gorgeous lashes. These are actually beautiful. I love the packaging. I'm not really sure what her pricing is for shipping, but it's called elbeauty.com and I'll definitely leave her information below for you girls who love lashes. Like I'm saying, who don't love some fucking lashes? Like these are absolutely gorgeous. So I do thank you, my dear, and hopefully I will put them on in an upcoming video tutorial because, listen, I like looking cute. I just don't go nowhere, but I do like to look cute, and I definitely will include you guys in that, um, but I definitely will share these with my daughter, Tati, who loves like those dramatic glasses. She loves these lashes. I forget who they're by, but she loves them. Let's get on to this real talk while I do my makeup. If you need a real talk about yourself and you want me to talk about it on real talk with everybody else in the whole wide world, then please go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line real talk so that I know that it is a real talk situation. Also, go ahead and change the names or let me know at least that you changed the name. Meaning, if your name is LaShonda, but you want it to be Rwanda, then go ahead and let me know. Hey, April, I done changed the names of this real talk. So, on that note, I'm not really sure if we're going to have an intro, but we're just going to get into this real quick. Okay? Huh? 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 What? Yeah. Hey April, I wanted to take the time to thank you for reading my email. You can call me Ray. My boyfriend's name is Dome. But to jump right into it, I've been with my boyfriend for almost six years. We've been in a long distance relationship this whole time. He's about five hours away from me. We see each other often. My main concern is that we aren't getting anywhere in our relationship. By this time, I would hope we live together, we're engaged, or had a kid together by now. I'm 22 and he's 26. I live at home by myself and he lives with his family. I'm not sure what it is, but sometimes I feel like he's scared of commitment or to progress in life with me. I've been on my own for about two and a half of the five years we've been together. I would have hoped by now he would have been ready to move in with me or been ready to, to, to look for a place with me, but he hasn't. I feel like he's gotten too comfortable with our situation with us going back and forth to see one another. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've never really had a problem with it until I've gotten older. When I go see him, I'm at his mom's house with him and his family. So that means no privacy, if you know what I mean. I've tried to express to him in multiple ways about the privacy thing, and his response is so nonchalant. I feel like for someone my age, I have it together for the most part. I have my own apartment, a car, two jobs, good credit, and everything else. I don't know what it is about me that makes him so indecisive about us. He is he is an M.E.T., so he's doing pretty good for himself as well. Is there any advice you can give me to help him to get to understand where I'm coming from and hopefully him and hopefully help him decide to make moves? I'm not in a rush to get married or to have kids, but I feel like we should be further than we were are in our relationship. Thanks, Ray. 
Well, dang, Ray got it going together. So she has been in a relationship with her boyfriend for six years. Okay, go ahead, girl. And she's only 22 and he's 26. Now, she's got it really together, okay, because she's got her own apartment and she's been in her own apartment for a couple of years now. She's got a car. She's got two jobs, okay, and she's got good credit. She, I'm pretty sure she got a bank account because why wouldn't she? And she's got, and I'm pretty sure she paid her bills and she got some food in her refrigerator. Listen, honey, let me tell you something. Sometimes as grown-ups, we get really comfortable in situations, especially if we feel like they've been working. Like with myself, for example, I say, I'm never going to get married again because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? However, I totally am in agreement with you about the privacy thing. Now, he is 26 years old. He know damn well he needs to be out on his own and his own thing. Even if he's not in the same town with you, sweetheart, he needs to be in his own apartment and not in his family's home. At 26 years old, I'm not saying kick your kids out, but if they have a good job as an EMT, that's a good-ass job, okay? You get paid pretty damn good. You need to be out on your own. You need to be making moves. You need to be coming by and saying, hey, mom, hey, dad, and keep it pushing, all right? That's one thing. Now he has gotten really comfortable. You didn't you did not mention anything about his parents being ill or anything like that. So I'm pretty sure that's not the situation. However, you didn't just say parents because it's one thing to live with just your parents, but you said he lives with his family. So I'm for some reason feeling like it's more than just his motherfucking parents that's up in that house, okay? Because if it was just his parents, you would still wouldn't have any privacy. But um I don't think it would be as bad as a family. A family is like more than two people, okay? I'm just saying. What I got going on here is a family. Now, here's the thing, Ray. Y'all have been doing this long-distance relationship for five fucking years, okay? There is nothing wrong with that. Some things work best for some people. However, when you guys get really comfortable with shit and he just pro you know, you, you go on, you travel in the distance to see him, that's when it's like, he's gotten really comfortable. I'm going to tell you what, me personally, if I have my own place, I'm not about to go traveling five hours to be laid up in the bed with my boyfriend who live at home with his parents and the rest of his family. Nigga, you either going to come visit me where I have my own place in privacy, or we just not going to be doing this back and forth thing. Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying give him an ultimatum, but what you can do to make him realize that, um, um, what you can do to make him realize that this relationship is becoming not even a strain, but it's becoming kind of like unadult like, you know what I mean? Because to me, it seems like it's becoming an adult life. Me personally, because I got kind of like thrown in the back right there with the text message that just came through. It seems very, uh, if it seems like to me, like I personally, I wouldn't travel five hours away to be in an uncomfortable situation. You know what I'm saying? Now, I'm pretty sure you are very well familiar with his family because y'all been together for five years, okay? For five years. So, I'm pretty sure you guys are very familiar with one another. However, you traveling five hours somewhere where it's very uncomfortable, all right? Very, very uncomfortable. Me, personally, I would have to have a long talk with him and let him know, like, from a grown-up standpoint, as much as I love you, it seems like our relationship is kind of being put on hold or put on the back burner because we're at, we're not even at odds, but we're kind of, like, at a distance. Let him know that you care for his family very much because I'm pretty sure you do, but you want to grow as a couple. You know what I'm saying? And there is definitely nothing wrong with growing as a couple. You want to progress as a couple. You want to move forward, you know? 
let him know, listen, I would love for you and I to have a place and share our lives together. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You still young. You're 22 years old. So, you know what I'm saying? From what you've written to me, wrote to me, you seem like you've got it, got a good head on your shoulder. You know what I'm saying? And he as well. You guys have been together for a minute. Now, I'm not really sure how you guys met because five hours means y'all didn't go to the same damn school. And he's 26 and you're 22, so he's four years older. So I'm not really sure about how you guys met one another. But if you guys want to move any further in a relationship, then you guys do need to share some things. Maybe he is not ready to move away from his family. Five hours to you may not seem like a lot, but for someone who is very probably close niche with his family, you know what I mean? Very close with his family because he lives with them. Obviously, he's close as fuck with them because he lives with them. Five hours might be a long distance to just up and move. You know what I mean? Sometimes we have to work together as a couple. We have to meet in the middle. Okay. And when I say meet in the middle, maybe he hasn't decided to move with you because five hours is a drive for some, you know what I mean? He might be the type of person who's really, really close with his family. That's why his ass still lived there. And unlike yourself, you 22 years old, you've been, been moved out for a minute now from your mom's house. And I'm not saying y'all probably had a bad relationship, but there's different circumstances for different people. You know what I mean? Like everybody has different issues. Everybody has different reasons of why they're not with person or why they don't live with someone or why they have been moved. And maybe you guys, what you may need to do is meet in the middle. Okay. When I say meet in the middle means find somewhere that's closer to his family to where you guys can live together. Now, he's got a good job as an EMT. That's a great job. Sometimes jobs and positions like that are really, really hard to transfer. So you got to take that into consideration. He's worked really, really hard at that job, okay? I'm pretty sure he's worked long and hard because those there's steps that you got to take to become an EMT, okay? So it ain't something where you just go and wake up and be like, oh, let me go put an application for being an EMT. I'm going to just... I'm probably gonna get the job i know i was flipping burgers last week but i'm probably gonna get the job because i got good people with person skills and you guys to have really good people with person skills to be an emt it don't work out like that okay so some things you know there are there are a lot of different reasons of why things are holding him back as to where he's at now if that's the case you may want to ask him that like hey don't you know i just want to know what is your goals what is your goals in this relationship what do you want to do different in this relationship that you have seen other people do in theirs and you don't want to fail at our relationship you know you got to bring up a good conversation sometimes you can't just throw shit in someone's face because then it feels like you attacking them and i know if you was to come at me and say listen i'm gonna need you to pack up and move five hours away from your family that's a lot to take on that's a lot like I think I would just be like, you know something? I'm going to just have to break up with you. That would be my response because I'm not about to move five hours away from my family for somebody because, because, and in true indeed, there is a time in our lives when we all have to grow up, but true indeed, there are a time in our lives when we have to compromise, when we have to work together, when we have to meet one another in the motherfucking middle. Okay, and that's what growing up and being a grown up is all about. My total suggestion to you for him to find out what his purpose is is to have a conversation with him. Ask him what does he want to see in this relationship? What does he want to see us? Uh, where does he want to see us in like the next year or two? You know what I'm saying? Where does he want to see us as a couple in general? How does he feel about moving away from his family? Why hasn't he? You don't have to be so in attack mode because I know that you want to be around him. And that's the number one thing to let him know that you want to be around him more. Let him know that you want to share your life with him. Okay. Let him know that you want more than five hours of a distant drive. And let him know also that if he is not willing to move 
within with you anytime soon, at least compromise and be able to drive to you more than you being in his home. You know what I mean? Five hours is a distance. And I'm sorry, but if you live five hours away and we don't see each other like that, I'm I'm about to get me some, okay? But I don't want to have to try to get me some with your whole motherfucking family around. Like, that shit is not cool. It's very uncomfortable. But you can't be, like, so aggressive with people sometimes because their reasons for not moving in with you or moving away from their family with you is may not be what you think it is. Meaning, you may feel like, oh, he just don't want to move away because he just don't want to. Whatever your case may be, there's always a different reason or there's always reasons for shit. It could be, listen, and I'm not putting this out there. I'm just saying he got another girlfriend or whatever. Now, in my heart of hearts, I'm pretty sure he doesn't because, and then again, I really don't motherfucking know, but I would want to feel in my heart of hearts that the nigga don't. You know what I'm saying? Like, I would want to feel like it's just about you and his family. And he's just a close niche person to his family. Or also, other issues arise. Like, okay, he has a good ass job. It's hard to leave a good ass job. I'm saying, if it were me, bitch, I ain't going no motherfucking way unless I'm guaranteed a good ass position at the next place. And um, I ain't got to worry about looking for another job or restarting or trying to build my way back the fuck up. Like I said, being an MT is not a piece of cake. It ain't something that you just put in a job application for and you're able to get the job real quick. You know, everyone has their reasons. And he might be that just that type of person who is a really, really a family man and doesn't like to be too far away from his family. I get it because I'm that same motherfucking way too. But in order to get to the bottom and get to the answer of the whole situation, the resource, um, you got to ask him a question. You got to ask him, where does he see you guys in the future? How would he feel about you moving closer a couple of hours away. You guys meet in the middle. You know what I mean? Each person has a reason of why they haven't done something yet. You know what I mean? Like with me, I don't know how to swim. Why haven't I learned yet? Because I'm afraid. I'm afraid. That's that's my motherfucking answer to you guys. Honest answer. I'm afraid. Okay? I have tried it before and I'm afraid. And I feel like this. Well, bitch, if you don't take your ass too far out, you won't drown. But then I got to think I got children, but they all know how to swim. Okay, except for Mumsy, and she goes to swimming lessons. So yeah, maybe I should be there with her. But it's I'm afraid. So each person has reasons for why they do or do not do the things that they do. Understand me? And for him to be with his family and still live with his family at the age that he is in, there's a reason. He may be very very tight with his family. I'm pretty sure that it ain't a money reason. And I say this because he's an EMT and they make damn good bank. So I'm pretty sure it's not that. It could be more than you think it is and more than he's telling you. But I definitely would have a conversation with him because you're never going to know unless you ask. And you know, even though for you, Ray, moving out and going on your own and doing things that's for you some people take a little bit longer than others to do things in life you know what i'm saying sometimes they say that men or women mature much faster than men that may be the case i don't really believe that you know why because in my heart i believe it is it has to do with who brings them up and how they were raised, okay? I don't think it has anything to do with, oh, because they're a man, oh, because they're a woman. Because I'll tell you this, there are some real dumb motherfucking women out here, okay? And you just be like, wow. And there are some really smart-ass boys or smart-ass men out there that you just be like, wow. So I never really go for, well, women mature faster than men. I just think it has a lot to do with how they were brought up and their upbringing, Honestly, that's how I feel. And he might be just a little bit closer to his family than you are to yours, you know? 
you're 22, you're out on your own. 22 is a very young age. And honestly, I would tell you like this, bitch, live your life to the fullest and enjoy your life. Don't hunker down and want to get married so soon and have children. Children are a blessing and they're a beautiful thing. And so can marriage be. And when I say so can marriage be, meaning to the right person. So even if you think that he might be the right person for you, this relationship that you're going through and these things that you're going through with him may be just the beginning of something real, meaning not real with him, but real with someone else. The way that he is acting or the way that he still lives at home, you know, may not be for you. He might be more family oriented and that might not be the type of person or the type of man that you're into. Maybe he's opening up doors for you to find the right individual. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Six years being with somebody is a long motherfucking time. However, those in those six years, you are able to learn how the person is. You're able to understand what you do and don't want in a relationship. You know what I'm saying? Like meaning, like with myself, I have been married and I've been with that same person for like 17 years of my life. Okay. And let me tell you something before him, I was in other relationships. You know what I mean? I was in other relationships. I had other boyfriends or baby daddies, whatever the fuck you want to call them. And I would just basically not put up with a lot of shit, but I would just deal with the shit and I would just let it go. But being when I was married to somebody, he it taught me a lot. Like, it really did teach me a lot. And life is about learning and just, just learning in general. And because I was married to somebody and I was with them for so long, it actually has taught me that, April, I am not about to put up with this bullshit. So, no, I am not about to put up with this shit neither. And so, I know as a person, I'm not putting up with certain shit anymore because I have already dealt with that shit in my life. And also, it has also taught me how to recognize bullshit in game when I see that shit, okay? Which is kind of fucked up, but, you know, when you go through a lot of shit in life, you're able to recognize bullshit in game. You know what I mean? Like they say, rec bullshit recognize bullshit okay not saying i'm bullshit but i recognize that bullshit because i have been taught by the best of them now he might not have been the best of them but he was the best of them to me because i was married to his ass and i was with him for so long so that's when i say by the best of them because he has taught me a lot of lessons in life so now because of that i know that i'm not about to put up with nobody's bullshit and there are a lot of things that i'm just not about to tolerate as a woman and as a human being too you know what i'm saying like i'm not about to put up with nobody's bullshit but I will say this. He might not be the one for you. Or, and then again, he may. But you're never going to find out what his real goals are until you really have a heart to heart with him. Not verbally attacking him. And when I say verbally attacking him, I don't mean curses to ask the fuck out and go off at him. Sometimes when you come at someone so aggressive, they don't really know how to take it. And then they shut the fuck down. And then they take it as you are, like, you know, being very offensive to them. And they're, then they become defensive. So when I say have a good heart, to heart with him means have a good sit down have a good conversation and ask him what his plans are what his goals are where does he want to see y'all because y'all been together for a long time and let him know how you really truly feel and you want to share your life with him yeah you have told him already that y'all ain't got no privacy etc etc and he may not see it as such you know what i'm saying because that's his family he may not see that as such and sometimes you got to put your foot down and you know say hey you know something we're going to do things a little bit different now meaning i'm not going to drive all the way over there as much as i love you and your family i need my privacy i need my moment in time with just me and you okay so i'm gonna need you to bring your ass to me more than more often bottom line and see how it goes from there six years may is a long time but sometimes shit happens for a reason and they are put here in our lives for certain purposes okay like i say my ex he's my ex-husband and we are like best friends now and we are kind of like getting back together but and I consider him my best friend. 
and everything that I go through in life and everything about me, he knows and he has taught me a lot and he has been put in my life for a purpose. You know, I have been put in his life for a purpose too, okay? But we have to learn from the individuals that we are around, okay? Some things are not always meant for us, even though we may feel it is as such because we've been with them for so long. That might not be the person that you're supposed to be with for the rest of your life. You know what I'm saying? And it may hurt, but these are lessons and people are brought into our lives for certain reasons and for certain reasons only. Okay? So, yes, definitely have a conversation with his ass. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So, let's just move on to the next one. I had to fix my eyeliner. I know I told you guys, Um, well, I, I'm probably, I've mentioned it and... Listen, y'all probably don't notice it, but I do. Um, so, and I know I have this. I have very hooded eyelids. So, over the years, you know, I'm older now. So, I'm, you know, I'm older. I'm 43 years old. And, you know, over the years, my eyelids have gotten even more saggier, a little bit more media. So, I have been contemplating, and I finally decided to go ahead and start looking for a eye surgeon so that I can have an eye lift, you know. So, they cut off the extra meat. And they take all the fat that's in your eyes. And I, I've watched many of videos on YouTube. It's totally disgusting. But your eyelids really heal themselves really quickly. And it sucks when you get older, you know. And the, if the first thing that goes is like your eyelids because it's just the tissue in your face and it's already thin. And I never have ever saw myself with getting any type of plastic surgery because I really just don't. I don't know. I just probably don't have the funds to upkeep with it. Because trust and believe, I have wanted to get my boobs done many a times. Like, tr they're not flabby. They're not saggy like that. But, you know, everybody needs a little uplift in their life. You know what I'm saying? Not to have them bigger because I love the size of them. But I would just like them to be a little bit more perkier. But, you know, with that being said, there goes maintenance with that. But the thing that just really bothers me the most with myself, um, besides my teeth, and I was very fortunate to get those done um, in the front, thanks to you guys. You know, you guys helped me out with that. Um, I just really want to get my eyes done. So it's a really inexpensive procedure. It's a couple of thousand dollars. So I have been saving. I, all, I tell y'all all the time, I'll be saving my money because a bitch is cheap. But I really, you know, sometimes we have to do things that make ourselves happy. And trust and believe, that's just the one thing that I want to get done. I just really, really feel like once I have that done, I'll be really, really happy. And so when I do my makeup, I have to kind of like do tricks. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one to make my eyes kind of like even out. And sometimes it doesn't work out for me. And sometimes it does. And then I have to redo it or I have to do something different because my eyelids have gotten a little bit worse. So over the years, they have gotten really, really bad. Um, not really, really bad, but bad to me. You know what I'm saying? Like more noticeable to me, especially if I don't have one like eyeliner or anything, you can really, really tell. So when I have one eyeliner it's a little bit harder to tell and especially lashes like um that's why I wear my lashes a little bit bigger now because it kind of like camouflages that that's just something I wanted to share with you guys you know what I'm saying so let's just move on to the next real talk real talk please read dear April please call me Tanisha a few days ago my boyfriend and I got into our first fight we have been together for nine months now and we are trusty and we are trusty in love and want to get married he has done so much for me and my son. He moved in an hour. He moved an hour and 40 minutes to where I live and moved in with me and was able to find a good job. He didn't have to do that because he wanted to move to Florida, but because we fell in love with each other, he stayed here. So here is what happened. We went he went through my phone and found messages from me and three other guys shaking my head. I know I am a horrible person. I have been talking to one of the guys for about two months and the other two for a few weeks. The guy I was talking to for two months, we got pretty serious and as in sending each other pictures and talking sexually. At the time I was talking to this man, my boyfriend and I were going through some stuff where he was looking for work for about six months and the sex wasn't the same anymore. So I started looking elsewhere and was only using the two guys for phone sex. So my boyfriend found out about it and it was so hard and he was so heartbroken. April, I have never seen him so hurt in my life. I felt like shit. He packed his bags and left. I didn't know where he went to. So I was just driving around calling him until he finally picked up the phone. He told me I ruined our relationship and he can no longer trust me anymore. He had he didn't know if he wanted to be with me or marry me. 
I understand how he feels 100% because if the shoe was on the other foot, I would have left too. So after 24 hours of begging and apologizing, he came back home only to change for work in the morning. He did move back in and he said he forgives me, but I think he is only staying with me until he saves enough money to move out. I have been so stressed and sad that I put him through this pain and I just want to make everything perfect again and I don't know how. I already deleted the social media apps I was talking to the, these guys on and everything, but I don't know how to build back up his trust and make him stay. I do love him so much. I believe it, I believe it or I just... I, I do love him so much, believe it or not. I just made a big mistake. Please help me if you can. I always watch your real talks every week. And sorry if this letter is too long. And you know what's so cute? I love when people send me pictures. They are so cute together. Like, seriously cute. You know how you look at people's pictures and you just be like, oh. They are. They look alike. They were made for each other. Like seriously, and then you could just see the happiness in them. Like seriously, like the smile that they both are given in this picture is like you can tell that they're genuinely happy. Especially him. And you know, shit happens. Like unfortunately, Tanisha, you made like a huge mistake. And they've been dating for nine months. And nine months to some people may not be a long time, you know what I'm saying? But then some people, you like, girl, please, y'all just dating. Y'all ain't really serious. But let me tell y'all something. Remember in the last email? It's funny how I will put the right emails together and read them and not read them all the way. But I'll just read a little bit to where it's like, okay, I'm going to just read this one or I'm going to use this one. And, but mainly I go in order, but it was an urgent one. So definitely I'm going to read that. But you know what? It's just funny how you look at people. This is black. Okay. This is some mattifying tinted moisturizer by Black Ups Cosmetics. It's, it, it does work really good. Um, but it's funny how you could look at a person and be like, oh my God, they look so cute together. They were made to be together. And I just see that in a lot of people. But unfortunately, Tanisha done made a mistake. Now this dude, we're going to call him. Well, she didn't give him a name, but we're going to call him Marcus. I don't know why. That was just the first thing that came to my head. We're going to call him Marcus. Now, Marcus Dunn stayed in Florida and stayed with her and her son because he in love with her. All right? He done moved an hour and 40 minutes away from his family to be with her because he is in love with her and his son and her son. And he has found himself a good job. Now, granted, like I said, that shit don't happen overnight. Finding a good job don't happen overnight. From according to her emails, it took that nigga six months to find a good job, okay, or a job in general. Now, remember, the last email, this nigga is an EMT. Maybe he don't want to move real quick because, you know, like I said, it's hard to find a job. Now, we got Tanisha boyfriend, Marcus, who done searched high and low for a job for six months. That's a long time. Finding a job in general, it takes a long fucking time. Okay? Uh, finding a job is a job. That shit is not about to turn up overnight. Like, yeah, it can turn up overnight, meaning you can find a job overnight working somewhere that your ass really don't want to work at, like at Mickey D's, at the grocery store, at um, Popeye's Chicken, at the Waffle House, you know what I'm saying? You could find a job at any of those places really, really quick. But some people want better for themselves, and there's nothing wrong with that, okay? So in the midst, she did get a little bit, um, what do you want to say? She got, a, in the midst of him looking for a job, she got a little bit upset about it. She got a little bit impatient. Um, probably got a little bit turned off because I'm going to tell you what, a nigga with no job is a turn off to me. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that feel that way. It is a turn off. I'm sorry, but listen, when my husband was looking for a job and I was paying for 100% of shit, huh, that shit was such a fucking turn off. And then when he finally found a job and I was paying 85 to 90% of shit still, huh? It was a turn off and trust and believe a bitch did not want to have sex with him. And I didn't. Okay. It became a very inconvenience, a very big inconvenience because here it is. I'm taking care of five kids and a grown ass man. Okay. Regardless of how many kids you got, I'm taking care of grown ass man, a household and some kids. Okay. And some bills and shit, whatever. 
So it becomes a, a turn off. So in the midst of Marcus looking for a job, Tanisha became not impatient, but you know, she became normal. Okay. Cause it's normal to feel that way when you got a man living with you and he don't have a job. Now, true indeed, you got to keep in mind that Marcus, the moved an hour and 40 minutes away from his family to be with her and her son, which means he had to kind of like start all over again. He had to look for a job himself. He had to find what was out there for himself. So Tanisha probably didn't take that into consideration that Marcus was kind of like putting the things that he does on the line. Now, real quick, guys, I'm trying to focus this, okay? Really, really quick. This is some concealer for a dollar from Shop Miss A. And I have shared this with you guys many a times, but this is by Just Color. And it works really, really well. It's just concealer and it's a dollar. So the link from Shop Miss A will be down below. So in the midst of him looking for the job, you know, and her being turned off, basically like, oh, this nigga ain't got no job yet. I'm getting tired of fitting for us and shit like that. She started feeling that he was probably less of a man and stopped sleeping with him. Or he may himself started feeling less of a man. You know what I'm saying? Because some men feel that way. Like if they can't provide for their family, they don't feel as a whole person. And that they should, okay? That they should. Because if your punk ass, if you can't provide for your family, you need to maybe go a little bit harder. Sometimes it all depends on the situation, okay? But the sex became less and less, unfortunately. And so she started looking for sex in all the wrong places. Y'all know how I be like, looking for love in all the wrong places. Looking for love. Now, it seems like these niggas that she was looking for love and having these conversations with was on apps. It wasn't like no text messages. These was on apps because she just clearly said she deleted the apps that she was talking to these dudes on. Now, here's the thing. I'm all for finding love, but when you have someone at home, you have to work your best on the relationship. You also got to keep in mind into consideration that this nigga done put his life on the line and put his shit on hold and decided to start all over because of how he feel about you and your little one. So don't think that a job is going to pop up overnight unless you want him to work at like Burger King or the Waffle House or Walmart. And that's fine and dandy for the beginning. But then y'all listen, y'all bitches will start complaining about that shit too. Like, oh, that nigga don't got no real job. He working at fucking Walmarts and shit. He ain't got no real motherfucking job. He put, he pushing the carts away at Walmart. I'm still paying for shit. Trust me when I say y'all bitches be feeling that way because I felt that same motherfucking way when my husband finally found a, a fucking job that shit wasn't shit all right because if it was why the fuck is a bitch still paying 90 percent of shit 85 to 90 percent of shit i'm just saying i'm just saying okay so shit start changing in a relationship now here's the part where it kind of sucks i for one didn't go looking for love and anywhere else i just got fed the fuck up okay but here was where the issue started this nigga found out that she was like sexting is that what y'all call it sexting yeah sexting she was sexting these dudes and that hurt his manhood and his pride and he left um like she said she would have to and i would have to i think if that was me i would have probably broke up with your punk ass okay seriously because did i just move here for you and your kid and then you got other niggas on the line bitch i would have left you I'd, i'm just being straight the fuck up i would have left your motherfucking ass for sure you would have been like but wait and i'd have been like bitch bye okay i would have left your punk ass you wouldn't have been able to say nothing to a motherfucker i would have left your ass too okay now, here's the thing. You lucky you got yourself. Not even you lucky, but he a good man. He seemed like he a good man. You know what I mean? Because he done came back. But here's the thing, sweetheart. Now you, you worried. You pressed. You pressed because you feel like he only came back to save up some money and then move the fuck out. And you really care for him. He love you. You love him. Y'all in bliss. Not right now, but y'all in bliss. And But you still paranoid that this nigga really don't want to be there, but he only saving up 
so that he can move out. That might just be the motherfucking case, okay? I'm never going to sugarcoat shit. That might just be the motherfucking case. But the only way you're going to find that shit the fuck out is if you ask him. But here's the thing. You don't even have to ask him that, okay? If that's what you feel in your heart that he's doing to you because of what you have done to him, my dear, you want to make things right? You have to be honest, okay? You have to tell him the reason why you stepped out of the relationship. You might not have really physically stepped out, but even if people read things, it's very hurtful. You know what I'm saying? That shit hurt just as much as it being physical because they feel like you have betrayed them. And he also probably feels betrayed and used because here it is, he's busted his ass to find a job and to leave his family and to be with you and your child. And here it is, you are on social media apps kicking in with other random dudes that probably don't get two fucks about you because if they did um they wouldn't be sex sexting you okay they don't give two fucks about you and here it is you have someone that does trust me we all have our vulnerable moments we all have our moments where it's like you know what i need to step back and think okay and sometimes we as people as a person we don't like you know what i'm saying express how we really feel sometimes it's hard for us to tell a person like look dude the reason why i stepped out on your punk ass is because you ain't got no job or because listen you you really not acting like a full man oh i hate when stuff doesn't focus okay so why why does it want to focus elsewhere i'm just done with this okay so as much as it may hurt to tell him the reason why you went and kind of like stepped out on him or started talking to dudes on apps and sexting, it's honesty. And that right there may save you from losing him. He might be thinking all types of shit. Marcus might be feeling like Tanisha is a thought and that's why she did this shit. And he ain't trying to fuck with her like that, but he just going to stay there. But Tanisha needs to be real about the shit. I'm saying if that, if you have been real, then that's cool. But if you haven't and you haven't said to him, listen, Marcus, you have to have a sit down. Sometimes it'd be so hard for us as people to have a sit down with one another. As bad as we want to and we talk shit about the other person, it, sometimes it's hard to be able to open up and to admit to our wrong. OK, like I'd be the first to admit, like like I said to you all like weeks ago, you know, what I'm saying I miss my old friend. You know, what I'm saying I miss her. And yeah, I was dead ass wrong for saying shady shit about her too on my social media videos but it's because of the way that she came for me and I should have just been a woman enough and said why I stopped speaking to her to her you know what I'm saying so true indeed it's hard sometimes to admit that we are wrong but you know what that is what being a grown-up is all the fuck about okay sometimes you got to tell a person because let me tell y'all this we can't read your motherfucking minds all the time. I know I can't. I am not a mind reader because if I fucking was, best believe, bitches, I would not be on YouTube fucking telling y'all shit and doing makeup tutorials. I'd be having my own little motherfucking shop telling y'all future and what the fuck y'all bitches do and don't want to fucking do. Collecting my coins like that. So with that being said, that's why I'm saying... Um, we don't, we can't read your motherfucking minds. None of us are mind readers. There are some that think they mind readers, like my motherfucking brother, who God knows he crazy as fuck. All right. He got some issues, but he think he is psychic and he think he been possessed and he gay. I have nothing against gay people, but like I told him before, you have to pick one of those and choose one because it's already hard being gay. It's already hard being possessed and it damn sure hard being a psychic. So pick one and then deal with it. Don't pick all three because that's a lot to motherfucking deal with. That's why your punk ass going crazy now because you want to be three things that you just can't possibly motherfucking be at the same time. So like I was saying, we don't read minds and it's hard to read motherfuckers minds. So therefore, it's hard to open up. We have to sit down and be grown ups and say what the fuck is really on our mind. Sometimes we don't do that. And that's when shit like this happens when we reach out to people that don't really give a fuck about us on social media and we become their friends. We become their pussy poppers. We become their fucking dick texters. Whatever the fuck you want to call it. That's what the 
the fuck we be calling it, okay? And that's what the fuck happens. But when we are able to be a grown-up and open up to the person and be like, look, Marcus, I, I understand that you moved here for me and my son, but it's becoming a little bit frustrating that you don't have a job. It's just something that I can do to help you. But being that you didn't do that and you went ahead and started sexting some other niggas, now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to rectify the situation and fix it. And you can also fix it very easily as well by letting the nigga know, listen, Marcus, I was not woman enough to come to you and let you know that because you didn't have a job, it started frustrating me and I started feeling some type of way about you. And then that's where our sex life went down the drain. And even though I didn't have sexual relations with these guys, I did violate by having sexting relationships with them. And this is only because of this reason. If you don't tell him this, he's going to think your ass is a thought or he's just going to think differently of you. You have to really sometimes give your whole heart and express how you really feel to some people sometimes. And not even to some people in general because it may help you in the long run. Meaning, if you hold back your true feelings and what you really need to tell this dude, you might miss out on a good thing, sweetheart. Sometimes we got to really fully open up. Let me tell you something. I'll be the first to tell y'all bitches, for real, I hate saying sorry to any motherfucking body. And, and, and you know what's so fucked up? I'll be knowing that I'm the wrong one. Like dead ass serious. I'll know that I am the fucking reason for the argument or I'm the reason for the bullshit. But yet and still, it'd be so hard for me to be like, okay, I'm sorry. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's not cool to be like that. But at least I could admit to that shit with you guys like listen i'll be the wrong the the last one to be apolog apologetic it's hard for some people to say sorry in case you guys are wondering where i got this from because i use it in a lot of my videos it was only one dollar like seriously this shit is only a dollar from shop miss a the colors are so rich and pigmented and i know y'all like where's the top at i broke the top also i don't even listen it is what it is but this is by santi and this is amazing for a buck oh god this is the best eyeshadow i've ever had for a dollar and you get six fucking colors you guys see that what are you getting that for a dollar not the dollar tree Okay, I ain't knocking a dollar tree because I love them, but I'm just saying. So, like I was saying, back to what I was saying. But like I was saying, also definitely check out Shop Miss A. I'll post the information below. But yeah, opening up as a person is really, really hard. It's hard. And listen, honey, Tanisha, you was wrong. Yeah, you was dead ass wrong, dead motherfucking wrong. But you know what? You human too. You a human being, and as a human being, we all make mistakes. Okay, like I said, I'll be the first one to tell y'all. It's hard for me to apologize to anybody, okay? But we all make mistakes. And with that being said, you have to move past it and you got to sit down and you have to let Marcus know, hey, I know how I made you feel because if it were me, you got to use your own self in this scenario too. He might think that's some bullshit, but listen, regardless of what you think he may think, honey, let him know because I'm sorry Nine months is not a long time for a relationship, but if a dude is trying to be with you and he done left his motherfucking family for your punk ass and you got a kid and he don't have one and he changed his jobs and it took him a minute, that nigga like you, okay? For real. That nigga like your ass. I'm just saying. He like you. I don't know about love or nothing because y'all in love, but I'm going to definitely say this. That nigga like you, all right? I wish a nigga would like me that much that he would be like, hold up. I'm about to move all the way across this motherfucker for this bitch, okay? Dead ass serious. I mean, I do have one nigga that'll move over here for the bitch, but I'm going to just have to put him on a back, not even a back burden, but I'm going to. You know, I'm going to have to figure him out for a while because I've been figuring him out for 17 motherfucking years, okay? But that nigga like you. So I would definitely, definitely sit there and have a full-fledged conversation with him. You're going to have to let it out, girl. Don't never be ashamed and don't never feel embarrassed because it's the two of you. And sometimes we got to put past, we got to put it past ourselves as to what people might think or what that person that we about to confess our sins and love to is going to think and just be real about the shit. Because the shit that you're about to say to him or you need to say to him may just save your relationship and it may just help your relationship. So with that being said, my girl, Tanisha, my love, I will definitely, definitely follow you. Just let him know. Hey, 
I like you too, nigga. I like you too. All right, you guys. So we're going to do one more real talk. Um, Lisa Hope. Let's see. Um, this is that Lancome. Monsieur Big. Okay. Monsieur Big. Um, uh, mascara. Mascara. Yes. Mascara. Ooh, buy one, get one free at Culver's. I love that burger place. I know y'all like, bitch. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Okay, so this one is really short, so we're definitely going to read this one. Okay, hey, April. Hope you and your beautiful family are well. I watch your videos on repeat sometimes just to help me get through. I'm 24 and now a single mom to my two-year-old little boy. I work full-time as a fashion researcher, too, so you can imagine my time is pretty full. His dad and I broke up about two months ago. Though our relationship was full of dishonesty, he cheated on me last year in May. He said it was only a kiss, but I couldn't get over it. We stayed together until May this year and now I have discovered that he is seeing the girl who he cheated with who he cheated on me with while we was together I also caught him texting one of his other exes about sex so I mistrusted him because of that as well it's just difficult because I compare myself to her she's curvier than I am she's prettier has a small nose he's always used to make fun of my nose and one of the reasons he broke up with me years ago was because of my nose I feel like she's sexier than me and I am in more and I feel like she's sexier than I am in a more obvious way and I don't want to feel like that I just want to get over it I I and not think about them anymore I want to concentrate on myself be full of self-love and just think just because he didn't want me doesn't matter I mean I, and doesn't mean I'm inferior do you have any kind words to help me thank you Chanel Wow so Chanel is 24 years old. She got a two-year-old. And basically, her boyfriend, the father of her child, was that her husband? Let me see. Uh, doesn't say if they were married or not, but they was together. And she caught him cheating before. And then um, they stayed together for a year. And then after that year, she caught his ass. Um, she broke up with him. And she found out that the, um, when once she broke up with him, he started fucking with the girl that she originally caught him cheating on her with he tried to say it was just a kiss when he first got caught but listen let me tell you something if he's if he's with that bitch now it was more than just a motherfucking kiss okay trust and believe it was more than motherfucking a kiss i'm just saying because listen i'm not motherfucking stupid a nigga could tell you whatever the fuck they want you to to um, believe and that's just given okay he surely ain't gonna be like oh yeah i got some pussy behind it i fucked the bitch i took her to dinner i take care of her kids i pay her bills he damn sure ain't about to tell y'all all of that shit he ain't about to tell you that shit okay that shit was more than just a motherfucking kiss okay that's what the fuck he wants you to know he ain't gonna tell you everything he wants your fucking punk ass to know but i will tell you this let me tell you something he was fucking with that bitch and it was more than just a kiss but here's something here's here's a little bit of tea for your ass or whatever you want to call it we as women be so hard on ourselves we always compare ourselves to the other woman we always say damn she look better than me or we always put another woman down okay that's just what the fuck we do as women. And that's not good either. I, You know something? I used to sit around, not even sit around, but I used to look on social media and even on TV. And I'll see women that are my age and be like, damn, this bitch look good for her age. We the same age and she look better than me. Look at her waist. Look at her ass. Look at her titties. Look at her teeth. Look at her shoes. Look at her man. Look at her money. Look at her car. Look at her house. Damn, look at this bitch. I wish I could be like her. Or, dang, why can't he love me? Why can't I look like this bitch? Damn, her nose is small. Let me tell you something, sweetheart. Everybody is different in their own ways, okay? It don't matter if you looked like, let's just say, Beyonce, okay? And you and that bitch is, is, is not on a Beyonce level. Or Kim Kardashian or who the fuck ever. The main thing is this. 
Don't compare yourself to some bitch that he done cheated on you with. Regardless of what he felt is different about her that he so-called likes, that's what the fuck he likes. There is somebody for every motherfucking body, okay? Let me tell y'all something. I don't judge people on how they look, but I have seen some motherfucking ugly-ass people in my time. Some ugly-ass bitches, some ugly-ass niggas, and they make some beautiful kids. Are they together? And you be just like, dang, why the fuck is she with his ugly motherfucking ass? You know what I'm saying? Same things that people would say about me. Why are you with him you too pretty to be married to him like what i see in him is not what the fuck you see in him and my eyes is not your eyes some people look at themselves and they find themselves to be god's gift to mankind like they the prettiest thing on the face of this earth and you look at them and you just be like this bitch is mad motherfucking ugly and look at her fucking face her nose her teeth whatever all right you know what i'm saying so each person there is always somebody for somebody that's the same thing with people with me people come to me all the fucking time not all the time people come up to me or i have had people come to me and I have had people email me and leave comments you are so pretty you are so beautiful I wish I looked like you like and I'd be like what bitch why the fuck would you want to look at look like me look at my eyes look at my teeth look at me I'd be like I am far from beautiful I don't know what the fuck you see in me but thank you you should see me when I wake up this is the shit that I be saying when people tell me that I'm pretty I don't see it but you know what to each his own beauty is in the beholder okay for what he seeing her the next nigga might not see in her but what he find that's real beautiful, the next nigga might be like, um, I'm sorry, but that bitch is not cute, okay? Just like some dudes think that it's real sexy to have this big fake ass and these big fake titties and all this fucking makeup. Some niggas find that so attractive while there are other men that's like, that shit is not cute. I don't find that attractive. So it's unfortunate that, yes, that is what we're going to do. We are going to compare ourselves to the last bitch or to the new bitch or to the next bitch that our man then left us for or we done broke up for. That is just human nature okay but there comes a time when we have to need to stop that shit we have to stop looking at that bitch I, I'm, I'm gonna just use this as an example I used to go on um, Instagram all the time and be like damn I wish I looked like her or damn why my videos on YouTube don't get that many views or why my videos on YouTube don't look like that or why I don't get this or why I don't get that you know what I'm saying I used to ha I used to do this constantly on a daily motherfucking basis scroll through Instagram and be like does this bitch really got all this makeup being sent to her this bitch don't even get no views on her motherfucking video she's like really irrelevant this is the shit that i would say or this is just the shit that people say in general not saying that that's what i said but this is what things go through your head and then i had to break myself out of that shit like seriously i used to stalk this one bitch page like dang what the fuck what the fuck then i had to say you know what april fuck that bitch and worry about you worry about what the fuck you're gonna do worry about how you're gonna progress and make yourself better stop worrying about these other irrelevant bitches and they might not really be irrelevant but to me they need to be irrelevant and stop worrying about what they're doing because you're doing what everybody else is doing gawking at them and that's why they getting all these motherfucking views because you're so worried about what the fuck they doing now true indeed her nose might not be your shape her ass might not be your shape her skin texture might not be your same her weave might just be a little bit better but you know something sweetheart there is somebody for every motherfucking body out there just like with me let me tell you something Some dudes might not like me wearing my head wrap all the time. Some dudes might not like my little pouch of a stomach or my missing teeth or my spaces or my sagging eyes or my not so perky motherfucking titties. But I'm pretty sure that the, I'm, I'm not pretty sure I'm positive and I know for a fact that all of this that's me right here, somebody, someone that I know finds this and real motherfucking attractive and sexy and he loves it for every motherfucking thing that it is okay so with that i have to come back down a notch a few notches and realize april this is life there is somebody for every motherfucking body okay if that nigga look like magilla gorilla and that bitch look like fucking fiona from shrek there's somebody for every motherfucking body okay what i find attractive Y'all bitches might find butt ugly. And what y'all find attractive, I might be like, bitch, please, that nigga need this and you need some motherfucking glasses. We as women need to stop comparing ourselves to one another. I know that's human nature and that's just what we're going to do because that's just what women do in general. We compare ourselves to the other. We look at her. But you know what? Listen, 
first of all, he was scandalous anyway, okay? Why the fuck is you worried about who the fuck that nigga is with right now? Because I guarantee you that, I don't even guarantee you, it may and it may not last his relationship with that bitch. But, just know this, sweetheart. Count your blessings because you ain't in a relationship with his ass no more. Count your blessings. Let the next bitch have him. And if she want him and she know he had a, a wife or a family at home and she want him, then let her fucking have him. Because the way you got him, bitch, is the same way you're going to lose him. You know that's what they always say. Some people don't find that that's true. But trust and believe that's the motherfucking truth. The same way you got him, bitch, is the same way you're going to lose him. He might be with you for 5, 10, maybe even 20 motherfucking years. But I'm pretty sure that he's going to fucking get tired of your punk ass and move on to the next bitch too. And he ain't even worth my time. Now he ain't even, I wouldn't give a fuck if he thought an elephant was fucking attractive at that moment in time. Okay. Whoever he fucking chose, just realize he cheated on you for the bitch. Don't compare yourself. That's what the fuck it <laughs> Listen, it's got pussy, and that's all he's probably concerned about. And I got like, what is that? Oh, that is shot. Mmm, honey, child. This is this Ofra powder. Ofra. Y'all know Ofra. This is that powder, and this is their Derma Mineral Powder Pink Sapphire, okay? I had this out of one of those makeup boxes for, like, ever and barely used it. So, same place I got this out of a makeup box, this Artiste Couture, Artiste Couture. <gasps> I love this one. This is the Illuminati one, um, Diamond Glow Powder. This one is so pretty. Like, you don't really need a lot of it. Oh, my goodness. You just put a little bit like that. Like, do you see that? This is their highlight. You know, I, I like highlights a lot, but I hate them when they're loose. But, you know, either way, that's why I don't really use this one a lot. But, and like I said, it's this little bit will last me for a minute, okay? Yes, this is the one that Jackie Ayana had um, collaborated with. And girl, I have one. Whew. Oh, shit. That's a little bit too much. Let me, let me try to take some of this off right here and put it on this side. Okay. A little bit too much for Mitch. Okay. People might get blinded and be like, okay, why is the sun sitting on your face? Okay. But yeah, let me tell you something, sweetheart. It take a minute to get over anything. And even though it was May, it's now motherfucking August. And I'm not saying, bitch, get over that shit. But you know what? Move past it. Stop worrying about what this bitch look like. Stop looking on their social media. Stop looking at her pictures. Stop worrying about her. Because I guarantee you, sweetheart, she ain't worried about you. And I tell you what. I ain't never about to worry about no bitch that ain't worried about me. Meaning, bitch, if you don't give two fucks about me, I don't give two fucks about you. And apparently she really didn't because if she did, she wouldn't have fucking dealt with the nigga. Who knows? He might have lied to her. Either way, I'm pretty sure he. she knows that he got a family, okay? I'm pretty sure she know that shit by now. But either way, you know, we got to self-love each other. I have learned to be like, listen, April, this is what you like. You like to wear elastic. You like wearing elastic pants. And if a nigga can't accept that, and he can't accept that you like to wear elastic pants, or you like to wear slides, your little Adidas slides, or your little flip-flops, then maybe he's not worth your time, okay? If he, if he can't realize that you like to wear your little head wraps sometimes, because it's 120 degrees outside, and you like to go without makeup sometimes, then he just can't be worthy of you. I love who I am and I stopped looking at all these bitches pictures on social media and stopped trying to be like them. I did. That's why I don't wear no fucking waist trainer right now because I stopped. Like, I, I wear it, but I'm not about to kill myself every motherfucking day wearing the shit. Don't get me wrong. I do like a good waist trainer from time to time, but I'm not about to kill myself trying to get like a small ass waist. Now, if I could snap my motherfucking fingers and have a small waist tomorrow morning, trust and believe a bitch would and anybody else who wanted one would, okay? It'll be, you got a small waist, you got a small waist, you got a small waist. All y'all bitches will get small waist if I could snap my finger and y'all ask me for one. But we can't. So therefore, I deal with what I have and I love what I have. You know why? Let me tell y'all this. And then I'm gonna let y'all go, okay? This is the real reason why. We are lucky as human beings to be able to wake up in the morning. And 
I thank God, meaning I have a conversation with God. I don't sit and pray. Every night I have a conversation with God because that's my dude. We cool like that. We be friends, okay? And I tell y'all all the time, I don't pray. I have a conversation. And I thank him for waking me up. But mainly I say thank you for this beautiful day. I'm glad that I had a beautiful day. Regardless of what I have come, I guess as older, as we get older, we start realizing it don't matter if your day was bad, if you woke up and that shit started off good and then you went to sleep and it started off bad. I get real emotional when I start feeling like this, but it don't matter if you woke up and you, and it started off good. And then before, when you went to sleep, it started off bad. You know why? It's still a beautiful day. Cause you woke up and you were able to live and see everything that's around you. You was able to see your family. You was able to see your kids, or your loved ones or your friends. You know what I'm saying? Like some people take that for granted and it sucks like for real like it really really sucks i don't even know why i'm crying like seriously it just sucks so to me like on some real shit this one hold up i have never had no mascara run on me but this lancome is not about to run on my face after autumn's in my motherfucking makeup hell to the no all right hmm Nah, I messed up my makeup. Fucking with y'all bitches. Anyway, it don't matter if you wake up and your day started off good and you went to sleep and it started off shitty. It don't matter if your day was shitty all in general. Regardless of what, it's still a motherfucking beautiful day because you ain't guaranteed to wake the fuck up. That's the hardest thing that we got to do in life is wake up every day because we can go to sleep and we don't even know if we're going to wake up and open our eyes the next day. So to me... <laughs> Every day is a good day. Every day is a beautiful day, okay? Some people may not be religious, and I'm going to be the first to tell you, I am not really that religious, but I have a conversation with God every night because we cool. That's my dude. And some people may not like what I'm about to say, but that's my nigga. Like, we close like that. We like this. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like I can talk with him. And I'm just glad that I can wake up every day. So every day to me is a beautiful day. And some things we take for granted a lot. Like, we have to stop and think, like, you know what? That bitch that you looking at every day that your man might be left you for because she got a perfect nose or she got a fat ass you don't really know what the fuck is going on in her world you know what i'm saying you don't know how she feel you don't know my you not know you may not know what she have going on this bitch may not have no kids and maybe she can't have no kids okay maybe she give a mean blowjob who fucking knows why he left you for her but you know what we can't not keep harboring and thinking why the fuck he left you for her or why he left his family for you to be with her okay you know what i'm saying it doesn't even matter at the end of the day, you got this beautiful two-year-old that you got to focus all your time to fuck that nigga, okay? Because like I said, there is always somebody out there for some motherfucking body. And like I sit around here and I say all the time, I ain't got no friends. I'm alone. I'm alone. The right friend is going to come around for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, and I guess maybe the reason why I started choking up at the end is because when I got that text message earlier in this, my best friend was like, you know, Rebecca was like... <laughs> The kids are leaving for Cali tomorrow. They want to come by and say goodbye to you. Um, so we want to come over tomorrow night. And I was like that. I was about to cry when I was texting her back because like, I know I'm going to see her again and I'm going to go to Cali and see her, but it's still not the same. You know what I'm saying? That's my best friend and I love her to death. <sighs> As a grown-up, I'm going to let her spread her wings, and I'm going to just go see her. You know what I'm saying? But, like I said, God puts somebody in our lives all the time for a reason. That man that you had a baby with, he probably was the, he was probably only put in your life for you to give you a baby so you could have somebody sweet to hold on to and to cuddle with every night and to be motivated for. There's all type of reasons why people are put in our lives. <sighs> Y'all just made me really fuck up my makeup. Like, oh my God. Okay. But yeah, people are putting our lives for all type of reasons. So don't worry about what that bitch look like. Like on some real shit, just know this. That you got this cute little baby, this loving little person out of the relationship. That's, you know something? That's what I be saying about my own kids. Like, y'all know I got five kids to four baby daddies. And I cannot stand the motherfuckers. Not my kids. I'm talking about my baby fathers. Not my husband because I love him to death. But y'all see, I always call him my husband. Even though he's not. But... 
those relationships didn't last that long with my exes, but you know something? I got really good, I got some good stuff out of those relationships, and that's when my kids and my grandkids came from those relationships too, because if I didn't have my kids, I wouldn't have my grandkids. So some people are putting our lives for reasons. Even if it's temporary, they put in our lives for reasons. And that nigga was put in your life for that one reason, and that was for that little boy. Fuck that nigga if he want to go to that bitch. Let her have him. Shit, he wasn't even worth your motherfucking time. He lucky you gave him that extra fucking year, okay? So what? He, he took that extra year out of your life. A year ain't that long. Okay, fuck him. Let him go ahead and dangle from a motherfucking bush and hang himself if he wants to. But just know this much the little boy is there and he is the best thing that's ever happened to you. And you didn't even have to tell me that he was because I know for a fact that he is because we love our children to death. And just think of it like that. Don't worry about him. For real, don't even worry about him. Worry about what you got going on and focus on you and love yourself. It takes time, like for real. Like, I, I had to really stop looking at these bitches on Instagram and worry about what the fuck they doing. Because, like, I just want to be happy, too. And a lot of times people think, like, oh, as a YouTuber, your life is that great. Or, oh, as a YouTuber, you get all this free shit. Let me tell you something. As a YouTuber, our lives can be really, really fucking troublesome. And as a YouTuber, our lives can be really, really, really hectic. Like, you know what I'm saying? Don't y'all think that I get tired of sitting in front of this motherfucking camera sometimes? and Or sitting in front of this computer sometimes and trying to make a video or do whatever I, have to, I need to do, you know what I'm saying, and try to make ends meet. Like, I, I work hard for my coins. I work hard, and I enjoy what I do. And the moment when I have to stop enjoying it is when I get aggravated for motherfuckers, like bitches on Instagram or bitches on YouTube or just bitches in general or companies because they will fucking piss me the fuck off too, all right? And I think, like, the videos that I'm able to, like, just be chill like this are, like, my favorite ones because, I mean, I don't give a fuck. I'll cuss on somebody's fucking makeup tutorial or review, too, especially if I don't like your shit because I could care less. But I had to really, like, stop worrying about, oh, this bitch got this or, oh, this bitch got that or, oh, this bitch is wearing this or, oh, this bitch is looking like this or she got all these subscribers, you know, like all these subscribers that she got, maybe they don't really, you know, who knows? Her life might be more hectic than mine. You know what I'm saying? Either way, the whole thing is this. We got to just worry about what the fuck we doing. And even though I could say that, sometimes it's hard and don't get, don't get me wrong. I still sometimes look at other people's YouTube channels or other people's social media or whatever and be like, how the fuck this bitch get all this shit? Or I've been doing this for this long and I'm still only right here and this and this and that. Listen, some shit is meant for some and some shit is meant for others. But I will tell you this. There are people that have been put in our lives for many different reasons. And I and I say this and I mean this truthfully. You know what I mean? Like with my daughter, Nay, uh, with Mumsy. My husband, he went to jail when I was like a month or two pregnant with Mumsy, my last baby. Now, mind you, he went to jail when I was pregnant with Nay, too, at the end of my pregnancy. When I was like nine months, two weeks before I had her, he, was into, he went to jail. And so when I got pregnant again, we was excited and... He was just like, oh, I'm going to be there finally. And then this nigga ended up getting arrested again when I was like a month or two pregnant with Mumsy. So at that moment, I was so depressed. And then my whole thoughts were consumed with him all the time. And I would lay in my bed and I would eat ice cream. I would eat sherbet. And I would lay in my bed with Nay, my fourth child, his, his, his daughter, his first daughter with me. <laughs> And all I would do is think about him and be depressed through my whole pregnancy and, and somewhat be depressed. And then when I had Mumsy, it was like this huge fucking brick house was lifted off of my body. And I stopped being consumed with thinking about him. And I stopped being consumed about being depressed. And like everything in my life changed. Like I wasn't consumed with him as much as I was for all those years. And when he even came home, I wasn't consumed. Like I didn't allow him to walk all over me because I was just so consumed with my kids. So she might've been my fifth and my last, but she was put in my life for a reason. 
things happen for a reason. She was put in my life and she helped me grow as a mother even better because, you know, I had to go through steps and after I had her, I changed as a mother totally. So, yeah, people are put in our lives for reasons and it might be a long temporary reason, like 17 years is a long time, but it might have been temporary. But or two years. Either way, people are putting our lives for reasons, whether you want to think so or not. You know what I'm saying? And we just got to take it for what it is. And we got to love ourselves. So on that note, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this long ass real talk, bitches, for real. <sighs> I guess it's time to go edit this video. And um, yeah, I love you guys. Stay diva and divalicious, and I will see y'all in the uh, soon to come video. Uh, uh, what? Yeah. 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 Yeah.